Today, how would you like to learn how to absorb huge amounts of information and for that information to stick? And what is the difference between learning well and not well? Well, I've got a little confession to make first of all, and that is a long, long time ago now when I was in high school, I had the enviable position of being pretty much the bottom of the class in spelling. But I also had the reputation of being one of the most, uh, the best mathematicians in my class. So I was top of the class at mathematics and bottom of the class at spelling. Now, how could that be, you ask? And the answer is it's all to do with the strategy I used. Because in spelling, what happened was I would sound everything out in my head and so when I was asked to spell a word, I would give the letters exactly as they sounded in my head. And of course, English is a bad language for phonetic spelling. And so most of the words that I tried to spell were wrong. I was, however, really good at recognizing patterns. And with mathematics, it's numbers is all about patterns. And so when you uh, know patterns, you can put numbers together very well, and hence I was very, very good. Added to that, I used to hate spelling, so I had negative feelings about it, and I used to love mathematics. Well, here's the thing, is you can change your strategy, or if you uh, have little kids like I can, you can teach young children uh, a really good strategy uh, for learning different things so that they have a head start in learning how to read, write, spell, etc. like that. So I want to talk about a couple of things uh, today with that. Now, first of all, we have different senses. We have feelings, visual, smells, tastes, and sounds. And some of the, and we use different senses to learn different things. And so there are visual spellers and they're auditory spellers. I was an auditory. In other words, I sounded out my words when I tried to spell. Now, you may realize, or it may be obvious to know, that those people who visualized the words were able to see the letters and the way that the words were spelt and could then just reel off the letters in any word and they would always get top of the class when it came to spelling tests. So one of the uh, tips for teaching kids etc to spell is to make sure they're visualizing the words. Now in order to check whether your kids are visualizing the words, ask them to spell the word backwards because if they visualize the word they can see the word and they can spell the letters backwards. If they can't do that, they're probably using their feelings or their uh, internal voice to sound out a word. If you want to uh, try to teach them to learn to visualize their words, then get them to imagine a visualization of their favorite superhero and imagine the word written on their chest or imagine it somehow visual. Another way is to break the word up into the different syllables and imagine each syllable as a different color. And it's important to get the syllables above or equal to or above uh, eyesight because your visual cortex is connected when your eyes are looking up. So that's a, a little trick. With numbers, it's the same. To be able to teach people patterns and see all the different patterns in numbers like 5, 10, 15, 20, you can see how they go up in multiples of five and zero. Now that's a really easy one, but there's lots of patterns like that. And if you get your uh, child interested in patterns, then he'll become a good um, mathematics speller. One final tip is something that we call the learning strategy. You can get yourself into a state in which you are able to learn far more information than uh, normal. And that is to be able to become relaxed, and super aware, and you can do this physically. What I suggest you do is place a small dot, a black dot, on the wall, a few meters in front of you, which is above eye level. Now look at that dot. As you're looking at that dot, try to be aware of the uh, peripheral vision. So you can actually hold your fingers up like this, and maybe even wiggle your fingers, and notice that you can see it in your peripheral vision. Then take your arms all the way back as far as you can whilst noticing the, the fingers wiggling in the peripheral vision. 
This will defocus your foveal vision so that you're defocused all the way out and it'll actually put you into a light trance. And it's shown that if your eyes are in the visual cortex and you're in a light trance like that, you will remember far more information for most people than any other state. So just practice it next time you have to absorb some information and you'll find that you'll retain that information a lot better. Okay, I hope those tips help. Thanks, I'm Peter Ripper.